Thought Vibration, or The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Book by William Walker Atkinson. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1906. This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 4. Mind Building. The Power of Man, Unconscious Mind Building, the I. The Sovereign of the Mind, the Universal Will, the Mastery of the Lower Self, the mental misgoverned by irresponsible faculties, the reestablishment of order in the mental kingdom, the first. Battle, the conquest of the lesser self by the real self, affirmation and exercise. Man can build up his mind and make it what he wills. In fact, we are mind-building every hour of our lives, either consciously or unconsciously. The majority of us are doing the work unconsciously. But those who have seen a little below the surface of things have taken the matter in hand and have become conscious creators of their own mentality. They are no longer subject to the suggestions and influences of others, but have become masters of themselves. They assert the I and compel obedience from the subordinate mental faculties. The I is the sovereign of the mind, and what we call will is the instrument of the I. Of course, there is something back of this, and the universal will is higher than the will of the individual. But the latter is in much closer touch with the universal will than is generally supposed, and when one conquers the lower self, and asserts the I, he becomes in close touch with the universal will and partakes largely of its wonderful power. The moment one asserts the I and finds himself, he establishes a close connection between the individual will and the universal will. But before he is able to avail himself of the mighty power at his command, he must first effect the mastery of the lower self. Think of the absurdity of man claiming to manifest powers when he is the slave of the lower parts of his mental being, which should be subordinate. Think of a man being the slave of his moods, passions, animal appetites and lower faculties, and at the same time trying to claim the benefits of the will. Now, I am not preaching asceticism, which seems to me to be a confession of weakness. I am speaking of self-mastery, the assertion of the I over the subordinate parts of oneself. In the higher view of the subject, this, I, is the only real self, and the rest is the non-self. But our space does not permit the discussion of this point, and we will use the word self as meaning the entire man. Before a man can assert the I in its full strength, he must obtain the complete mastery of the subordinate parts of the self. All things are good when we learn to master them, but no thing is good when it masters us. Just so long as we allow the lower portions of the self to give us orders, we are slaves. It is only when the I mounts his throne and lifts the scepter that order is established and things assume their proper relation to each other. We are finding no fault with those who are swayed by their lower selves, they are in a lower grade of evolution, and will work up in time. But we are calling the attention of those who are ready, to the fact that the sovereign must assert his will, and that the subjects must obey. Orders must be given and carried out. Rebellion must be put down, and the rightful authority insisted upon. And the time to do it is now. You have been allowing your rebellious subjects to keep the king from his throne. You have been allowing the mental kingdom to be misgoverned by irresponsible faculties. You have been the slaves of appetite, unworthy thoughts, passion, and negativeness. The will has been set aside and low desire has usurped the throne. It is time to re-establish order in the mental kingdom. You are able to assert the mastery over any emotion, appetite, passion, or class of thoughts by the assertion of the will. You can order fear to go to the rear, jealousy to leave your presence, hate to depart from your sight, anger to hide itself, worry to cease troubling you. Uncontrolled appetite and passion to bow in submission and to become humble slaves instead of masters, all by the assertion of the I, you may surround yourself with the glorious company of courage, love and self-control by the same means. You may put down the rebellion and secure peace and order in your mental kingdom if you will but utter the mandate and insist upon its execution. Before you march forth to empire, you must establish the proper internal conditions, must show your ability to govern your own kingdom. The first battle is the conquest of the lesser self by the real self. Affirmation I am asserting the mastery of my real self. Repeat these words earnestly and positively during the day, at least once an hour. And particularly when you are confronted with conditions which tempt you to act on the lines of the lesser self instead of following the course dictated by the real self. In the moment of doubt and hesitation, 
Say these words earnestly, and your way will be made clear to you. Repeat them several times after you retire and settle yourself to sleep. But be sure to back up the words with the thought inspiring them, and do not merely repeat them parrot-like. Form the mental image of the real self asserting its mastery over the lower planes of your mind. See the king on his throne. You will become conscious of an influx of new thought, and things which have seemed hard for you will suddenly become much easier. You will feel that you have yourself well in hand, and that you are the master and not the slave. The thought you are holding will manifest itself in action, and you will steadily grow to become that which you have in mind. Exercise Fix the mind firmly on the higher self and draw inspiration from it when you feel led to yield to the promptings of the lower part of your nature. When you are tempted to burst into anger, assert the I and your voice will drop. Anger is unworthy of the developed self. When you feel vexed and cross, remember what you are and rise above your feeling. When you feel fearful, remember that the real self fears nothing and assert courage. When you feel jealousy inciting, think of your higher nature and laugh and so on, asserting the real self and not allowing the things on the lower plane of mentality to disturb you. They are unworthy of you and must be taught to keep their places. Do not allow these things to master you. They should be your subjects, not your masters. You must get away from this plane, and the only way to do so is to cut loose from these phases of thought which have been running things to suit themselves. You may have trouble at the start, but keep at it and you will have that satisfaction which comes only from conquering the lower parts of our nature. You have been a slave long enough. Now is the time to free yourselves. If you will follow these exercises faithfully, you will be a different being by the end of the year and will look back with a pitying smile to your former condition. But it takes work. This is not child's play, but a task for earnest men and women. Will you make the effort? For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.